Hello and welcome back to my Factorial 1.0 tutorial. Let's play I'm Exterminator and thank you for joining me. And uh, we are back after a day or so of absent episodes and uh, I do apologize for that. I, uh, I've just been very busy the last few days and was doing uh, a lot of streaming for the science battle against uh, fellow streamer Colonel Will. And uh, I've, I've, been <laughs> I've been not sleeping very well. I'm very tired. I'm very tired at the moment. Um, so I just, I, I mentioned that because, uh, I, I, I want to let you know that if, if I make a couple of mistakes here and there, that's probably why, but I did really want to do an episode. So, uh, we are back and, uh, that is the delay. Plus I did want to give time for the rail episode to kind of sink in, uh, you know, let a lot of people view it as many people as possible rather than just jumping into the next one without, you know, without people really viewing, uh, the rail one fully. Uh, you know, just because there's a lot of information in that. So what we're going to do today is we are going to continue. Oh, hello. Uh, can we just... Okay, we can actually run some of these guys over like that. Good thing we came over here. Um, so, <laughs> this robot's having a little trouble repairing since we are covered in that goop. Um, we're going to continue the rails here a bit. And then we do have some... Uh, we do have some fairly uh, serious biter problems... Uh, we, we actually had a fairly large attack here. I just finished cleaning up and repairing from uh, and I want to go destroy some bases now uh, I have done all the base destroying on camera mostly so far and uh, I did say I would do a lot of it off camera and I have in, in the just when we cleared the perimeter here, but I want to show you a new tool in our arsenal uh, While we clear some bases a little bit into this episode, which is the personal laser defense uh, speaking of which uh, why don't we go ahead and research that because um, we actually have not yet. So uh, while we try to research that, hopefully we will actually get to it on time here. Um, we can work on these rails. So uh, we can continue these rails up as we were doing here. And I didn't really, I did not have time sadly to get the global grid and just general grid sorted for uh, these diagonal rails and the other turn the other turn for some reason did not work out quite how I would have liked um, So for now we can just place these like this which is very nice. Um, they are overlapping as you can see and we're just clicking on top of them to Place that um, you you can uh, place these in the map Which is something I showed off in my 1.0 overview video, but I haven't really showed off here So if you go into map view uh, you, you can zoom in you know to get to this kind of radar-esque view um, and place them like this, and you could always do this. Um, well, not always, but for a very long time. However, a new feature 1.0 is placing them actually from the true map view. Uh, you can see if I hold shift, it's clearing uh, these trees that are in the way there. Uh, and it will place it in this map view uh, like this. And you can see my bots are building it. Uh, now this could be a problem. I'm not sure we'll be able to make this turn. We'll find out. Um, we also are out of power poles, which I probably should have made more of here. We'll just make all that we can. Um, but I think power poles are a bit close together. I think we're having some potential. We're having too many power poles. I don't know why there's three in here. That seems slightly excessive. Uh, so we will have to do without power poles temporarily. Um, and I did actually cut <laughs> the power to this outpost, which is unfortunate. Um, but if we go ahead and snap here well this one yeah so these i try to turn on the grid for this turn and it's not really aligning with the rest of things so i need to sort that out so what we're going to do is we're going to come in here and right click this and we're just going to turn off the absolute grid the world grid like that interestingly it still doesn't quite work out um i feel like our power poles somehow i think our power poles got messed up here a little bit when i was messing with the Grid. If we turn that off completely, I don't think that'll fix the issue. No, it won't. Um, okay, well, that is fine. Um, we, we just will have to change these power poles up a little bit. Uh, let's go ahead and just do that. I'll have to fix these, it seems. I think these got off a little bit. Okay, I actually moved them. That's the reasoning. Um, is when I was messing with the grid, I moved the ones on these diagonals, I think to try to make the grid work. And I think I'm pretty sure that's what threw us off there uh, on that power pole alignment. But what we can do here at this point uh, is 
we can, well, we can somewhat work with this. This again, not everything's aligned to the grid. It is slightly funky, um, but we will place, well, we'll somewhat place this. We'll go ahead and place that and we'll go ahead and get rid of uh, these ghosts right there. So there's a little bit of revamping to do here, uh, but we can go ahead and just clear that. You can right click on ghosts again to uh, clear them. And this part's a little finicky with our power pole connections. Uh, again, uh, there's some, some fixing to do here. Uh, now one thing, I don't think I've showed you this, is you can manually connect power lines actually. Uh, and it may just not show them simply because they're, a I'm not entirely sure <laughs> what's happening here. Um, but you can actually connect wire. So once we get these plates, you can manually connect wire, which is uh, pretty interesting. So, but now, now this is lined up. So we would need some cliff explosives here, which sadly we do not have uh, on hand currently. Uh, now we could line it up with this, of course. Um, that one would be a little hard to tie into. I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna build this straight out like here. And then right at this section here, we're gonna build a chi junction. Um, so these robots are, of course, um, they're hanging there waiting. So this is one slight issue with robots is uh, it's assigned the task to have the robots throw the cliff explosives here um, to robots other than these. Uh, and obviously we do not have cliff explosives currently um, in our possession. So what's gonna happen is these bots will just sit here and wait forever until um, other bots come and do it. It would be cool if they were smart enough to, uh, you know, not go and place the rail until the cliff was blown up or to realize that they can't place it and then bring the rail back. Um, but that might be probably a bit too much for the game engine to handle. Uh, what we're going to do here, though, is we're going to grab some steel because we do need that for our some stuff here. I was going to say for power poles, but we actually have those automated down here. Go ahead and grab that. Uh, and we are nearly to our personal laser defense, which is fantastic. Um, just go ahead and grab 25 of these for now. And the other thing we're missing at this point for ourselves is some cliff explosives. Now, I'm not sure I've actually made explosives yet. i have not. So we're going to have to take a little bit of a detour here. Explosives luckily are quite simple. Um, they require water, which we already have here. They also require sulfur, which we already have, and they require coal, which we already have. So it really at this point is just a matter of setting this up. And I'm going to take the lazy way out in this case and I'm going to build them here. Primarily, oh dear. See, this is the part I just defended against. Um, primarily because explosives aren't something we're going to be needing constantly. They're not really, they're not an item that's needed like in science production. Um, okay, we did kill those, but they took the turret with them, sadly. Uh, they're not something that's needed in science production or anything like that. See, my bot go, went ahead and replaced that. Sadly, there was, uh, they don't replace the ammo. Um, also, we're having some serious copper shortages here at the moment, I think. What is eating all of our copper? Ah, the circuits, I see, interesting. Um, yes, we, we need to set up more copper here. That This is why we're building a rail so that we can properly set up outposts uh, more efficiently and such. But anyway, um, Explosives aren't really needed in science and such. Uh, they're really only needed for cliff explosives and uh, some rockets, I believe, which I don't really ever use. I think they're needed for tank shells too, but we are uh, a fair bit past that point in the game right now uh, where I would be using tank shells anyway. Uh, so I'm fine. And this, also this is backed up. So this is, I'm just explaining, uh, you know, to you why in this case I would find this acceptable rather than doing some sort of proper... Uh, set up for this, you know, the fact this is backed up and also the fact that we really don't need many cliff explosives, or, well, may, hopefully we don't need many cliff explosives, but we don't need uh, many explosives uh, that we can uh, go ahead and do it like this. Plus, it's very convenient. Sulfur's here, the water's here. Uh, everything is set up already for this. And uh, we'll just go ahead and we'll cap that at two because... Uh, cliff explosives do take uh, 10 explosives, which is a fair number. It's going to take a minute to get that. And we do have the personal laser defense finished. Uh, I think what would be worth researching, though, is some damage. Because the damage uh, 
well, it affects lasers. I think it affects personal turrets. I remember at one point the devs saying that it doesn't, but I feel like it kind of does. Um, so if we go here and we look at this, this does 30 laser damage, has a range of 15 and a shooting speed of 1.5 uh, per second. And uh, much like all the other modules, uh, armor modules that we can put in our armor, this stacks. So you can have multiple of these at once and multiple of them will fire at once. Which is really quite nice. Um, so they can they can stack up pretty easily. Uh, they are a fair bit expensive while we're over here. Let's go ahead and grab some batteries. They are backed up. I can actually grab them directly from the plants here because they do keep a bit of a buffer uh, inside inside there. Um, also, let's do that. Because uh, we, we actually don't have laser turrets automated quite yet at this point. Um, so we need to actually be making those by hand, which will take a little bit of time. Uh, so I do want to... <laughs> almost no copper here. This is really quite unfortunate. Um, I do want to get those handcrafting. Go ahead and grab those. And then lastly, we're going to need a large amount of steel. La laser turrets do take quite a bit of steel here. Um, so we can make one of these. Uh, looks like we're potentially missing... Batteries, uh, it looks like. So I didn't actually grab enough batteries, interestingly. And we'll start with two. Okay, uh, so at this point, we can go continue our rails. I think what we're going to do, though, is maybe... Did I set up rails over here? No, I was putting them in a box, I recall now. Uh, let's actually grab the remaining bit of these... Um, cliff the explosives, so we can... Make some more cliff explosives if we need to. I imagine we might uh, on our on our way to where we need to go. And we did finish the damage. Again, the copper is really, really quite slim at this point, um, to the point where we are very much running out of the uh, yellow packs. That's really where it's stopping. Uh, you know, proceeding to. Uh, but that's okay because the science we're doing at the moment. It's not really require yellow. I'm in fact going to get one more damage and I'm going to queue up a shooting speed because it's quite cheap. Um, and then we'll probably hold off research, research for a little bit while we recoup our copper stores. As you can see, there's very little um, piercing ammo coming through, which means that there's very little bit of military science here. And I am just going to collect my robots here. Come on, guys. Try not to pick up the belt there. Okay. So we will proceed onto these rails and I do want to show you a T-junction and the signaling for that. Uh, and then we will go test out these laser defenses as you can see. It's taking a good amount of time that now hopefully the robots are efficient <laughs> with their cliff exploding. It's questionable. Um, I'm not entirely sure why that one required being marked. Maybe it just didn't think it was going to... Um, use a cliff explosive that effic efficiently. Um, okay, so these are connected. It's interesting it doesn't show the copper wire connection for the actual power transfer in the blueprint. I, I suppose that's just assumed. Um, now, this one is missing the red and green wire. Much like copper wire and stuff, you can connect these uh, red and green wires manually if you would like to. Uh, so I can take this and just click, left click here, and then left click here, just as if you're connecting it to an inserter or a box or anything like that. And do the same with green. And if I don't hit Q to clear my uh, cursor, I can actually just continue on. You can see it's already in my hand. And it will just kind of continue on here from where I last did it. So it's quite nice. I really don't think we'll be needing the circuit wires, but place them anyway. We are missing the green until this craft queue is finished. Uh, Let's go ahead and do this. I think hopefully, hopefully we can get through here without uh, needing more cliff explosives. But it looks like we may actually need more rail signals. Looks like we're being attacked again. Yes, it's definitely time to go destroy that base. Going to hold shift again. Make sure we mark those trees for deconstruction automatically there. This one robot is out of power, unfortunately. Go pick him up. And I'm just going to pick these guys up, try to expedite the process here. 
And right around here, what we're going to do is we're going to build a T junction. And uh, just just for time sake and resource sake, I'm not going to continue the two lane system out here. Uh, we we will eventually. Uh, we will have a T junction, which just inherently is two lanes the way I've built it, and uh, continue the two lane system out here, and then split off one lane here for this outpost. But for the time being, uh, we're just going to have one lane, and I'll show you how to turn that two lane junction into one lane. It's luckily pretty straightforward. Uh, looks like maybe one more place of the blueprint. Oh, something in the way, I suppose. And there we go. So I want to go retrieve some more signals before we uh, proceed, just because we will need those. Okay, so now that this is all placed and ready to go, uh, we can go retrieve some signals and then place the T-junction here. And uh, I'm going to attempt to line it up the best I can with this line. We may have a little bit of a weird finicky squiggly line uh, there, but uh, hopefully, you know, for, for the connection, but hopefully we can avoid that if at all possible. Uh, okay, so let's go ahead and collect more signals. Uh, we could grab some chain signals as well while we're at it, I suppose. And probably some more power poles. All right, so this T-junction is our blueprint right here. Again, this is one I have not messed with for the uh, actual grid, the global grid or, or anything like that. So uh, we will just try to align it normally, which is what I did. This, this is what I always did. This is what everybody always did before this 1.0 feature was introduced. Um, so we have this line and I'm going to tear some of it up because it will be in the way of our initial placement for this T-junction. Uh, this power pole might be as well. We'll have to see. This T-junction is quite large. Yes, it will be. We had already cut power there anyway. Okay, so what we do is we take this T-junction and we line it up so the power poles meet. And sadly, we are not... Oh, we are... <laughs> we are exactly one rail off there from lining up, which is quite unfortunate. Uh, so we may have to redo things a little. I, of course, could line it up like this, uh, but it really is supposed to overlap on the power poles perfectly like that. And I would like to have it continue as such. So uh, we're going to place this down. And I'm actually going to turn off my robots for the moment. Uh, the reason for that, well, no, I have a better idea. Uh, the reason for this is I, I wanted to manually place the signals um, so I can show you the signaling here. Um, so instead of turning the bots off, I'm going to place all my signals in that chest. They can go ahead and place, uh, the robots can go ahead and place the, the rails and the power poles and, su and such as they please. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and pick this up. This one was flashing uh, because it was in an incorrect placement um, now that I have placed these extra rails here. Um, same with this one, and I will go ahead and explain that. Okay, well, that one can just stay there. So when they flash like this, this means that it's... Uh, you know, that there's something incorrect about what it's reading, you know, in front of it in the, in the rail grids here. You can tell this if you go to pick up a signal or even use a ghost. Um, the issue we're running into is, based on the color coding we can see here, is this entire section from here throughout this entire junction is all considered one rail block because we don't have any other signals placed yet um, to separate the blocks. This whole thing is counted as a rail block which is, as you might imagine, causing issues. Um, so uh, typically when this flashes, this is an indication to you that uh, there are signals missing somewhere because it's reading probably a whole section. It's a rail block that shouldn't be. Um, now, one unfortunate bit here is that uh, due to rails being the way they are in the sense that uh, they work on two tile grids, two tile increments, um, we cannot actually connect this rail to this one. Um, the turns don't allow us to do that. Um, so what we're running into here is I do actually have to run this single rail, on, uh, sadly, to match up here. Now, on this turn, we should be able to reconnect just like that. And I'm going to just disconnect this. For now, we can leave this here. Again, with just this being a single outpost and train here, uh, we can have this uh, be, be without signals. I will, of course, need to pick up the second line here. 
uh, eventually, but currently it's not interfering with anything. Uh, and this does not have power. Probably, okay, I forgot. Actually, not entirely sure why this does not have power. Where did we lose power? So we can, one thing we can do here is we can click this button, electric networks. This will show us where our power is cut. And the reason, obviously, <laughs> is, uh, well, because we have um, no power connected here. I didn't, I didn't actually do anything with that. So um, I don't know what outpost that was. Was that coal? Hopefully we don't run out of coal in this process. Uh, I'm just gonna... So yeah, post will be running now. Uh, however, we, we don't have anything coming in. We do have a fair bit of coal. We're really not using that much coal there, so that should be fine for a good while. We did finish that research, and I think uh, I'm going to go ahead and leave that be. Uh, also, while we're at it, I am going to make... Uh, I think I'm okay with two shields. So what we've done is we've now connected this up. And there's a few things that we need to take into account with our signaling. Uh, one thing is realizing which direction, which rail direction we've connected this to. So uh, this is on the left side, which based on a right-hand drive train system, uh, this is going this way. This is going from north to south. Uh, and like I said, we're going to connect both these lines to here um, just temporarily ideally we would have this be a two lane continuing down and then have it just split off one here um, but knowing this we need to do some signaling uh, just like with our straightaways that we showed in the last episode we need signals here to indicate that this is in fact going uh, south to north um, going upwards in a right hand drive system and then we need a matching signal to indicate this is going the other direction now, when you merge two lines onto one, what we actually need here is we need two, uh, we need a signal on each side directly across from each other, like this. Because what this is doing is this is indicating that we're going from a uh, a system where it's just one direction on each lane to a bidirectional system on one lane. So we're saying, okay, this lane here that's going this way, and then also that's going this way is merging into one lane which allows you to go both ways if we don't have one of these signals if we only place one um, the system won't work uh, because uh, it, you know it, it won't be able to get out because it's, it's the, the, the train is not told that this is a, a lane that allows it to go both directions so that's why we need that there now in terms of the signaling uh, we have a bunch of signals placed here these ghost signals and I, I call them ghost signals because they are ghosts. And this is where I want to cover the rule that I learned, the little, um, you know, I, I would say it's a soft, fairly soft rule um, in regards to it's, uh, you know, not every, everyone doesn't necessarily follow the rule, but it, the, this, the, the idea behind this signaling rule um, is correct signaling. And this is, this is what has allowed me to learn signals for junctions and in general and place them correctly, uh, you know, just by memory. And that is that in a junction, uh, it, it could be a T-junction, it could be a four-way junction, uh, just anything where you have rails crossing and stuff, there would be a junction. Um, chain signals need to go before rail crossings and rail signals should go before or where rails merge. Uh, and there are some caveats to this, but in general, this is a very good method to follow. And it looks like we are having a very heavy attack down there. Unfortunately, we need to be rudely interrupted again. Um, but that rule uh, is something that I have followed for quite a long time after learning it, and uh, it has served me very well. Uh, this is a very, very good method, I would say, to follow. Ouch. Um, luckily, I think they only killed belts and a power pole, it looks like. So, it's a fairly easy attack to defend against. Although, I'm very puzzled as to where they came from in the middle of our base. I'm going to say this one right here. but um, and, and I will show you that. And you can maybe already tell just by the ghosts that were placed down. I'm going to attempt to drive through here without hitting my power poles are the bane of your existence in a car. Um, so the robots will place them, but we can still follow this logic. So uh, 
I'm going to place a signal here and let's go over this together. So let's start with this direction, this rail here. Uh, we come through, we are missing a few signals. I think I accidentally picked them up. Uh, so coming this way, right to left, uh, we see several crossings and we want chain signals. Remember, we want a chain signal before every rail crossing. A crossing being, well, when they cross, when we have something like this uh, being different from a merge where we are merging two rails into one. This is not a cross. It would be a cross if this uh, continued on through here, but they're merging. Okay, um, so we have a chain signal here, but we actually want one here too, technically, uh, because this is before a rail cross. And we'll put one. And you can see this is separated this block. And the reason for this, now that you can just follow this rule that you want a chain signal before rail crosses and a normal signal before rail merges. Um, again, there are some caveats, you could do chain signals before the merges, um, which would probably work. Uh, however, you don't really want to go the other direction and do uh, normal signals before crossings and that causes problems uh, really just based on the example I showed last episode where these chain signals the reason we put a chain signal before a crossing is because this chain signal is going to look all the way ahead and uh, you know it's going to say if there's a train in this section we actually want to stop imagine this is a locomotive um, we actually want to stop this train here and why we want to do this is because if we have another train, imagine I'm a train coming down this rail, uh, we want him to still be able to go through this T-junction this way, right? We want him to still be able to go through here, which he can. And that's the point. Uh, if we had these all be normal signals, these two right here, uh, what would instead happen with those being normal signals is since the normal signals only look into the next block, uh, this train would come and this train would stop right here. And obviously, with it being more than a one length train, uh, you know, again, imagine this covering this junction now. Um, what this is going to cause is, well, it's going to block this as it was, but then the train would also be extending here, and it's going to stop any other trains from being able to use this junction. So it's just going to completely halt the throughput of this. Uh, and that's why we put these chain signals, because this chain signal is looking to this one, which is looking to this. And uh, that is, you know, that's why this allows it to stop the train back here. And the same applies for all of these crossings. So the same applies here. We have a rail cross. We put a chain signal. We have another rail cross. We put another chain signal. And this is going to achieve the exact same thing that we just discussed. Uh, and then on these merges, we have a signal before the merge on this line. And on this other line that merges in, we also have a rail signal. Again, you could make these chains and it would probably work just fine. Uh, and the reason obviously for this is just so that we don't have, you know, me as a train coming through here and then another train coming through here and colliding uh, is, is basically the reasoning for this. Um, so that's, that's why we have those there. And then again, chain signal, because there's a cross here. There's another cross here, so we put a chain and then there's a merge. So we put a normal signal on this section of the merge and a normal signal on this section of the merge. Again, there's a merge here. So we put a chain or a normal signal here. Sorry if I said chain signal, uh, but uh, we then put a normal signal here as well. So hopefully that makes sense. And that is a rule you should be able to follow um, without much issue uh, for any junction. You know, it, it could be, it could be, like I said, it could be a T junction, it could be a four way junction. Um, there's all kind of different junction designs. Um, just having this rule of anywhere there's rail crossings, put chain signals before that crossing. And anywhere there are rail merges, put a chain signal before that. So hopefully that helps you out um, in, in your signaling. Again, we will cover that just every time we do it. Uh, now, to end out this episode, let's go destroy some bases, and I want to uh, demonstrate the personal laser defense here. So um, I'm going to go ahead and grab a shooting speed. I don't think it will be done by the time we get there. I uh, should probably grab some iron, too, just in case. Just in case we need to, I don't know, make something. <laughs> so we have a couple turrets in case of an emergency. We have a couple capsules in case of an emergency. But I've taken my roboports out. Um, until we can get a Mark II power armor where we have much more room. 
Uh, and I put in these laser turrets. And one shield. Ideally, I would like two shields. We just simply don't have room for that. And uh, you don't have to click any buttons. The nice thing about these is you don't have to do anything. As long as they're equipped and you have power, they will pull from your battery first. And then your power source. You can just walk up and they will shoot anything in range. As you can see. Now, these are quite good, and at times they can make you seem invincible uh, if you have them set up properly and enough research. Uh, but still keep in mind you take damage, just as you do any other time. Uh, now, again, moving is important, especially for spitters, because of course we want to avoid all this. As you can see, I, ha I did not shoot a single bolt there. Um, so these are quite nice. Now, it is much more impressive when you have three or four of these and a, quite a few upgrades for them. It helps quite a lot. Um, you know, I, I would have just incinerated all those guys in, you know, a, four, a quarter of the time if we could, uh, you know, fit even another one in here and finish this upgrade. Um, this base, I'm not entirely confident on taking on. I'm really, based on the amount of spitters that generated there, I'm, I'm pretty sure that that base we just killed was what was causing us issues. Um, this one over here will cause issues soon. Uh, now, I think to close this out, we will have a little fun, and actually we probably could take on this base, uh, because uh, your laser turrets, your personal laser defenses, uh, will work in a vehicle, which is a fantastic feature. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna take these out just in case. I'm gonna throw I'm gonna throw these guys here just because we have a we have a lot of stuff here, but these will work. These personal defenses will work um, while you're in a vehicle. And I think I may need to abandon the mission here for a second to repair my tank. Perhaps not. We may actually be able to finish this off. Looks like we barely did. And I'm going to just let my lasers finish the job here. Fair bit of damage. Okay, so we did get some large spitters spawning, which is a bit frightening. Those will do a large amount of damage. Uh, and there we go. So combining that with the bullets in the tank or tank shells if you choose... Uh, and ramming the bases and worms. Uh, we made fairly quick work of that base. I was, <laughs> was a little worried there. We might not make it out with our tank alive, but by the skin of the, our teeth we did here, skin of our armor. And I think this is a good place to call it. That was, again, that one was not quite in the pollution, but it's a good demonstration of the power and, uh, you know, just kind of preemptive clearing there as well. So uh, there we go. We got the rail run. Of course, I do need to actually hook up the... Um, section here to our delivery, which should be pretty straightforward. I'm just going to come hook this up, and I will do that on episode because I will show, I would do want to show you the signaling for that, um, where we just tie the one lane in, and uh, temporarily we will have a much better system, a stacker and stuff later on, which we'll cover. But hopefully the junction and signaling made sense to you guys here and was helpful. Uh, if it was and, and you enjoyed the episode and did find it helpful, uh, like is much appreciated as always, so you can, so it can help uh, other people come across the video and find it in the series and hopefully find it helpful and informative as well. And if you're new to the game, uh, you know, hopefully this helped you not have as much trouble and frustration with the rails. And I hope you're having a fantastic time with the game. If you're new to the channel, uh, I give you a welcome. And uh, if you aren't subscribed, feel free to subscribe to keep up with all the new content that's coming out. Uh, spotlights, discussions, news, the series, uh, stream footage, etc. And uh, I believe that will do it. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Please leave any questions and thoughts you have down below. And uh, until next episode, I look forward to seeing you all, and do take care.